Welcome to our Sunday morning edition of The Papers. With me are Peter Kellner, who's president of YouGov, and the journalist Shama Pereira. Today's front pages. The Observer leads with a warning from a former coalition health minister that the NHS will collapse unless it receives a multi-billion pound injection of cash. The Sunday Express says the BBC has paid £15,000 to a man who says he was sexually assaulted by Jimmy Savile on BBC premises. The Sun says a permanent memorial to the murdered soldier Lee Rigby will be placed at the scene of his death in Woolwich. And Jeremy Corbyn makes the front of the Independent on Sunday. He's told the paper he will re-nationalise the railways if he wins the next election. Labour leader is also the subject of the Mail on Sunday's main story. It has an interview with his ex-wife Jane Chapman in which she gives details of an alleged dispute between her and the Labour frontbencher Diane Abbott. The Telegraph, meanwhile, says that Mr Corbyn resigned as chairman of the campaign group Stop the War Coalition after its website published a poem critical of the royal family. And Mr Corbyn also makes the front page of the Sunday Times, which says that half his shadow cabinet is prepared to vote with the government for airstrikes on Syria. So let's begin. And Jeremy Corbyn is, for journalists, the gift that keeps on giving, doesn't he? I mean, he dominates the news again today, not always in the way he'd like. That's right. So what you've got, if you look at the papers as a whole, Gavin, Sunday Times front page story as an example, you have a party thrashing around. It's not like the early 80s, when you had the battle between the Labour so-called moderates and the Benites, militants, Trotskyists. That was a very clear battle. You could see the battle lines. This, people are just thrashing on. They have no idea what to do, whether to go along with Corbyn, whether to fight him in the shadow cabinet, whether to stay in the Labour Party, leave the Labour Party. And therefore, it will continue to be the story that keeps on giving until the battle lines become clear. We've got the Labour Party conference starting a week today, and I think that is when this battle will start to, to clarify. Sharma, how do you see it? I mean, the Sunday Times has just one of these issues. We'll go through a whole lot of them, but Corbyn hit by mutiny on airstrikes. Half of Shadow Cabinet backs the reaction. He doesn't. And one of his problems, he may be a breath of fresh air, but he has been, in the eyes of some, disloyal to past Labour leaders. So a plea for loyalty behind him is quite difficult to sustain. Exactly, I, mean, I think that the problem is that the, the reason that the British public has just got so fed up with politics is because it's all about loyalty to the leader in the party mm -hmm. and not actually mm -hmm. about any loyalty to the people. And I think very interestingly what uh, was so unusual and amazing about Prime Minister's Question Time this week, for example, was that those of us who are not mm. politically inclined mm. were reminded that he, these people are there as our representatives, not as our teachers and author, authoritarian mm. figures who have the right to tell us that we're, you know, we misunderstand, we don't know what we're doing. Here was somebody who actually was individualising every question and reminding those of us looking in, irrespective of what we think of him personally, uh, that we have a voice, that they are actually there to speak for us. And that means that there will not be continuity across policy. It means people will break ranks. And that's absolutely how it should be, well, in my opinion, but, Peter. Yeah, well, let me say two things. <laughs> One is MPs are representatives, not delegates. We choose them, we rely on them to form their judgments. And I think Corbyn is moving far too much <coughs> towards a sort of de <coughs> democracy philosophy. But secondly, coming back to the Sunday Times story, and, and it's a microcosm of a bigger issue, what the Sunday Times is saying is that the, all of the five strong foreign affairs team, these are people that Jeremy Corbyn in the last few days has himself appointed to be Labour's shadow team with, led by uh, Hillary Benn, all of them think that Jeremy Corbyn is wrong about airstrikes on Syria, they think, if necessary, there should be backing for government uh, attacks on, on ISIL, Islamic uh, State. And you can go across the whole range of policies and you've got a shadow cabinet, many of whom disagree with Jeremy Corbyn fundamentally on a whole range of policies. This is incredibly unstable. But Isn't Shammy, it democratic, I mean, actually, that he has put in people who he knows disagree with him? Does that not suggest that he's open to having his opinion changed or at least being challenged and, and do you from think, within? Do you think he's more in touch with public opinion? Because there's plenty of people who think, oh, hold on a minute, I the Middle East has been a mess and we haven't made it any better. Well, I think this story in the Sunday Times is very interesting, Gavin, because it, it, it's talking mm. about that uh, shadow front bench uh, mm. opinion being uh, divided 
divided. But here it also goes on to say the Labour split comes as a serving general warned that there would be a direct challenge from the army and mass resignations if Corbyn became mm. prime minister. And he's quoted as saying there would be mass resignations at all level and you would face the very real prospect of an event which would effectively be a mutiny. Now, I find it scary that anybody in our army would be saying that simply on the basis of this man uh, coming in as leader of the opposition. I think what he has actually shown us here is a schism that is unspoken, mm. even at the Ministry of Defence and, 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 and with our armed forces, you know, which is that they're in a ropey situation. Very, that's very interesting. Let's move on to the independent because this is this, this story will run and run too. Corbyn, my plan for the People's Railway, effectively uh, mm. renationalisation Mm. And I think, uh, looking at your polls, I seem to remember mm. that a majority of people in this country would actually quite like to renationalise the railways and one or two other utilities as well, even a majority of Conservatives. But, no, that's right. We, you go, we did a poll a couple of years ago, uh, which showed that there was, as you say, a clear majority, including just over 50% of Conservative supporters who backed the renationalisation of the railways. The independent on Sunday story is actually very interesting because what it's actually saying is that Corbyn is actually edging back from the... Uh, proposally made when he was campaigning for the leadership, saying, let's nationalise the railways pretty quickly, one fell swoop. What he's now saying in an interview with, with the paper is that as each franchise reaches the end of its time, then it will be picked up by the government, which in principle makes it far cheaper than as we're closing down a franchise and, and, and buying it out. The trouble is, and this is where you get to the real fault line of Jeremy Corbyn versus most of his MPs, is that most MPs nowadays, Labour MPs nowadays, think that you need competition in these various services. Yes, you can have certain tracks like the North East Line, uh, the London uh, um, Edinburgh Line was for a while uh, state owned, but it was state owned in a competitive environment. What Jeremy Corbyn is talking about is going back to the days where you have a state monopoly when every little bit of investment in the railways comes against, comes against public borrowing. And what used to happen was the railways were terrible because every time there was a financial crisis in the country, they would stop or slow down investment in the railways. And it was only when we had privatisation and competition that you had the investment that the railways needed. So uh, even though Corbyn is softening his policy compared with what it was, I think it puts him on, on the wrong side of the wider debate about how we provide these national so, goods and services. Some of, us, some of us remember the British Rail Sandwich, which wasn't an entirely mm. great treat, however. No, but, but actually, neither is the Virgin Trains Sandwich or the East Coast Line. Oh, actually, East Coast Line is pretty good. But, um, you know, I, I, kind of, I think it's very interesting that he will stagger it because it allows them to find out if they can do it. And if they can't, then they can <coughs> stop halfway through that programme. Yes, they could, but if Jeremy Corbyn gets the chance, and he would need probably 10 years as Prime Minister to complete the process. Uh, I, my fear is if we have a Corbyn government, ideology will trump evidence. And we've had the evidence of when I was growing up, young adult years, the railways were terrible. In the last 20 years, they've not been perfect. Privatisation was not a huge success. The public clearly didn't terribly like it. But actually, the railways are much better run. There's much better infrastructure. There are fewer accidents. They are more reliable uh, than they were. And it saddens me that Jeremy Corbyn wants to throw all that away. Well, the, the real problem is just one of a continuity, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's a bit like you've got to learn how to be Tesco. You've got to learn how to offer the same customer service mm. option across the country uh, rather than being the NHS where you're OK in one postcode but you're not OK in the mm. other. And the government has never mm. quite... Successive mm. governments we'll, have never quite cracked We'll that. get on to the NHS in a moment, but there's one more Corbyn question uh, uh, story which I think is, uh, is very interesting. Uh, the Mail on Sunday... Exclusive. Jeremy Corbyn's first wife tells the Mail on Sunday how their marriage really ended after his lover turned minister Diane Abbott made hostile home visit and told her, get out of town. Now, there are some people who think this is fascinating and there are some, uh, many people who think this crosses a line. This is not what we care about in a future potential Prime Minister. What, what, where do you stand on this? I think it crosses a line and it's absolutely fascinating. And I, I'm going to spin it into a total positive about Jeremy Corbyn, even though I don't support mm. Jeremy Corbyn, uh, which is that I think it shows that he has got on his front bench, and this is an ex-lover of Jeremy Corbyn, Diane Abbott, uh, who is loyal, 
feisty, willing to fight for what she wants, tries to get the obstacles out of the way, single-minded, loyal after many years when there's no reason to be. I mean, this is actually a story that shows Corbyn in a very good light because those of, the, those of uh, his Brent front bench who have actually... Uh, allocated their loyalties to him for whatever reason, uh, continue to be loyal. And I think that's quite interesting, actually, because I can't imagine David Cameron's exes, if he had any, mm. sort of sitting on the front bench next to him thinking he's still great. The Mail on Sunday doing good PR for Jeremy Corbyn shock. <laughs> well, I, you know, I think it's a non-story. I don't think the media <coughs> should play any part in these old private life stories. I think politicians private lives. And if, if they demonstrate hypocrisy, there was one cabinet minister some years ago who I think the week he, he spoke out against abortion in, in the House of Commons was recommending to his mistress that she have an abortion. Revealing that, public and private revealing that mm. is, is worth doing because there's real hypocrisy. Uh, in this case, we're dealing with something that happened 30 years ago of no huge relevance. And the odd thing is, I think the Mail on Sunday has a much better political story because a fascinating interview with Sadiq Khan, Labour's candidate for Mayor of London, in which Sadiq Khan, having, in a sense, got the mayoral candidacy on, on Corbyn's coattails mm. in, 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 in a vote amongst um, uh, Labour members and supporters in London, is now suddenly distancing himself from, from Jeremy Corbyn um, and, and doing a sort of bounce turn. I think that's a much more interesting and important story than this trivial stuff well, about... Well, it is, Peter, but you Jeremy can't Corbyn's take sex Adams. out of... Uh, you know, as a driver for so much that happens in everyone's lives and in every industry, including the media and politics. What's and actually, when it was? happens in politics, it is of interest to us. And I think, you know, it is very telling that today is the day we mourn mm. Jackie Collins. Mm. The world is full of married mm. men because this is actually a kind of perfect story that backs up that that kind of theory of the pervy married mm. man. We're, we're, know, we're I mean, a bit hypocritical about all this because we're spending a lot of time discussing it and mm. it's of no interest, apparently. Well, it, it obviously well, it, is of interest. It, interest, it, isn't it? it interests people. Um, you, you know, if, if you said to somebody uh, it would be interesting to have fit pictures of the Queen's bedroom just after she gets up in the morning, that would interest a lot of people. But would we think of that? Of course not. So, you know, so, so I think journalism must apply a higher standard beyond just what well, would interest the readers. I think you are in denial about, you know, what drives human behaviour, and that is so important. I think this is... I mean, this is obviously 30 years out of time, mm. which is why we can laugh at it and, and, and just look at it as a bit of nonsense. But actually, it's a bit of, a, bit of nonsense I wonder whether that points to the way we in live. Sense that, mm. In the sense that, you know, uh, Bill, Bill Clinton hit the big time Absolutely. in America because of his adultery. At the very yes. start, people started to talk about it. 1992, and people think it's interesting and think it's human as well. Well, I also think what we deny is that often with people who are very energetic and really big mm. achievers and big thinkers, mm. what drives them often is that sex drive. Uh, you know, I've worked for so many newspaper editors who were all carrying on all over the place, not because they didn't love their partners, but because they just had this energy to discharge all the time. Well, I think we'd better move on That's before one. we get into yeah. any more trouble. Yeah. Let's, let's, uh, let's move on to uh, The Observer, yeah. which is...